Olá, Deus te abençoe. Hello, God bless you. Thank God. Welcome to the Life Change Today program. Thank you so much for being there. And may God bless you immensely, your family, your Friday. May it be wonderful. May this weekend which is coming may it be incredible. May you have an incredible schedule with your family. Starting with the table. Build a strong relationship with your family. Take care of what God commanded you to take care of your spiritual life, your relationship with the Lord, take care of your family, raise your children in the fear of the Lord. Because I have been talking about Judges too, that tells that a generation, a generation grew up who didn't know the Lord, grew up a generation who didn't know the Lord, and the consequences were terrible because they weren't prepared, right? Their parents didn't prepare them. People, these for me so painful because I see it happening. We receive cases, parents who are desperate, desperate. Because if I tell you these stories, you will be astonished. Things are happening out there. And I'm talking about children, children, but many parents, unfortunately, they didn't are worried and they aren't worried about giving the right thing to their children. That is the faith of, in the Lord. They are worried about many things. Many things. Sometimes we find children, children who are seven with a power, powerful smartphone in their hands. But they didn't have one Bible. In their houses, they didn't have worship service. They didn't have prayers. They didn't have the reading of the scriptures of the word. Parents who tell their negligence in the desperate, when they were desperate, that they were never worried about praying during the meals, to read the scriptures for their children. They weren't worried about the spiritual life of their children. And when I read, look at this. After that whole generation had been gathered to their ancestors, another generation grew up who knew neither the Lord nor what he had done for Israel. They didn't know. And it's obvious that you're going to do the same question. I do. How? The most religious nation who received such clear commands mainly about children. Teach your children. Seated at the table when you wake up walking. When you lay down, when you get up, you see. Raise memorials when your children ask. What does it mean? You will be able to say because God is a God of generations. And when and as the psalmist said, one generation teaches to another, one generation tells to another generation what God did. 
and when one generation fails about sharing the faith to their children. That's what happens. One generation who didn't know the Lord, who doesn't know the Lord, is a weak generation. Weak, weak, weak. And that's what we have been seeing in this generation. A weak generation. Weak teenagers. Young people who can't handle being contradicted. And they are already talking about death. They are mutilating themselves. They are weak, but why? When their parents neglect, when parents didn't fill themselves with the truth, they will fill themselves with the lie, with lie. And what will happen? They will become weak people. They will become weak people, weak person. Needy. Emotionally needy, and then you see parents who are needy of their children, dependent, emotionally dependent of their children, intimidated. Do you believe that we find parents who fear their children, who are intimidated by their children? They, they have fear. That they children give orders, corrects them, say the children determines what they are going to do. Parents who say, I will ask to that person, I will see what he want, what they want. What does a teenager know? What? They didn't have any experience. They need to be instructed. They need to be guided. A child need, needs to be teached. How many children? I'm talking about children who are, who, who are six, five, six years. That their parents said, oh, he, they don't want to come to the church. They, they didn't want to come to the church school. They didn't want. Oh, they didn't like it. They didn't want to. It start the children off on the way they should go, and even when they are old, they will not turn from it. Who will teach it? Who will guide? It's the parents who teaches, the parents who guides. Parents, and the Bible says, read Proverbs. Who hates his son will not discipline him. Who don't discipline their children, they hate them. It's written, it's still in Proverbs, it says that it is the parents who will remove folly, foolishness from the child, disciplining them to not happen. Look at this. Therefore, the Lord was very angry with Israel and said, because this nation has violated the covenant I ordained for their ancestors and has not listened to me, I will no longer drive out before them any of the nations Joshua left when he died. I will, I will use them to test Israel and see whether they will keep the way of the Lord and walk in it as their ancestors did. Now I'll leave you there to treat, to test these people because these people aren't listening to my voice. These people don't listen to me. But you see that when one generation failed to prepare another, and it starts like this, you teach your children to listen to God's voice. Look, you need to depend on God. You instill the kingdom's value, the principles and values of the kingdom. Kingdom, You... You instill the values to your children, in your children. You instill the word inside of your children, within the children. Wasn't it what the Lord said to Joshua? That for Joshua prevail, he will need to speak the word and meditate on it day and night. That he couldn't any way get distracted, nor to the right, nor to the left. 
that he needed to be strong and courageous to face whatever he had to face, grounded on the word, that the battle was spiritual because God doesn't talk about weapons training. No, no, the Lord gave him his spiritual commands because the battle was spiritual. And all the time you're going to see the Lord fought. The Lord gave victory to Israel. The Lord fought for Israel. The Lord delivered. It means who was fighting. It's obvious that they went to the battlefield. They used the sword, the spear, the bow. But who gave the victory. It was God. Who gives the victory is God. And how will our children have victory if we don't teach they to fight with the spiritual weapons, to use the spiritual weapons? How will they have victory if they don't know how to use the tools that will give them the sport, the victory? We are not teaching the faith. Many people aren't teaching faith to their children. It's a hedonist society. Hedonism is the worst thing. It's the worst enemy to destroy families. People who are following pleasure all the time, they are just thinking about the next pleasure, what they are going to eat. It's always this. We need to stop and see God. Parents are too worried about entertainment to their children. One more leisure. Let's go to the shopping mall. Let's do it more. Let's do that more. Let's eat this. Let's go to that place to eat that. And the Lord is saying, listen. Star children of the way they should go. And even when they are old, they will not turn from it. Put the right thing inside of your children. The best inheritance is the faith you can give people. I lead with people. Parents who gave the best. Children were born with a silver spoon in their mouths. They are with their lives destroyed. And their parents are groaning. Groaning. But parents themselves tell in tears that they weren't worried. They gave everything to their children. Everything. An incredible room, bedroom. Everything, everything. The best video game. You know, a living room like a cinema inside of their house with huge screens, but they didn't teach their children to fear the Lord, to love God. They didn't give to them the opportunity to feel the taste, to like the pleasure for spiritual things. Their children went to everywhere. They have already traveled. They went here and there to Disney and many other places. I'm not saying that this is wrong. That's not why I'm that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that if you don't share, don't teach the faith in Jesus Christ, they won't have conditions to win, to fight the battles, to face the battles of this world. They won't be able. How I see, unfortunately, continually, Teenagers getting lost. Sometimes children, children, even children, because they have weak parents and needy parents that pursue the love of their children, not the respect, the respect, who don't put discipline, instill discipline. Parents who spoil too much. And I'm not saying for you to don't be a love, you know. We need to have balance, control. I am a loving mother, but I'm firm. I am a loving grandmother. I kiss, hug, squeeze, but I'm firm. There's no ne negotiation. We don't negotiate values. What is right is right. What is wrong is wrong. And a child needs to be 
guided, corrected, disciplined, with love. A child needs her kiss, needs leisure, needs a child needs it. But what they really need overall is firm parents who fear the Lord, who teach the Word, who guide them to the direction of victory, which is the fear of the Lord. If our children don't fear the Lord, they will have an unhappy and failed life. They will choose paths of death. As I have been seeing people choosing for path of death, teenagers choosing the path of death, they think that is a path of life, but it's the path of death. They are living a life, hedonistic life, selfish life, and they aren't happy because it's missing the blessing of God. It, it's missing the, it's missing peace. But because they weren't grounded in the word, on the word, they weren't taught to love God over all. How many teenagers, when they went to college, they were, they were seduced. Their souls were taken, possessed, controlled. They became terrible people. And they started to even hate their parents. And look what a demonic thing they were. They were indoctrinated. They were taught to hate family, hate God, hate everything, and to live a messed up life. That will lead them to destruction. They were led, guided to the path of death because it wasn't there. They weren't prepared, taught. The word wasn't rooted in them. In a maker and a peer. In Jesus' name, we can't lose one more generation. Look at your children. Teach your children to fear God. There is no use for you to give orders to your children to pray, to read the Bible. They need to see you reading, praying. You can't be a contradiction. Why do your children find contradictions in you? He won't, they won't want God. How are you someone at the church and another person in your house? When you're in your house, it's just confusion, trouble. How many during the path to the church, they are fighting. And when they come out and their children are seeing this. When they go out of the church, they start to fight. No. Look at this. After that whole generation had been gathered to their ancestors, another generation grew up who knew neither the Lord nor what he had done for Israel. Then the Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord and served the Baals. And then... I will read the 15. Whenever Israel went out to fight, the hand of the Lord was against them to defeat them, just as he had sworn to them. They were in great distress. When their parents failed to teach them, now, this generation, their children, were groaning because you read it and it says that they were groaning they were in great distress and defeat and more defeat because the lord was against them because they were far from the lord 
But why? Because their parents failed. They failed. They terribly failed. No. Hey, when we build a family, now we have, now we have duties. We can't live a selfish life anymore. No, now you have a family. And we are here to serve. To serve our spouse, to serve our children, serve our family, serve our parents. But why are there children who don't serve their parents? Because they were never taught to be servants, to fear the Lord. Did you understand? In Jesus' name, when you aren't a good example, man sharpens man. When you don't give a good example, your children you will copy bad examples. And even, maybe, as we find children who don't want to know about God, about church. And they point it, they say it. My mother was for a whole life, but she used to do it, do that. My parents were a whole life. I was raised at church, but I saw my mother doing this, my father doing that. Total, a total mess. Our home was a mess. Dysfunctional. It just had fights, confusions, trouble, lack of fear. Their parents weren't examples. Their parents didn't show God to them. Through their own lives, parents didn't teach their children to fear God. In Jesus' name, get up. Let's change it. You see a tragedy here in this chapter. Just suffering, suffering, failures. Because these people was far from God. But why? Because a generation failed to teach another. And we are living a time where people just, they are just worried about running back and forth. And many people lost the pleasure to teach, to take care of their family. Mothers who don't want to be mothers, they want to have children, but they don't want motherhood, maternity. They don't want to take care of their family. They don't want to take care of their home. It's running to any side. They don't have time for their children. Men who are running and they don't have time to take care of their family. They are neglecting their families, their home. And then divorces are happening because they aren't cultivating marriage. Children are getting lost because they are not being raised in the path of the Lord. No, we can't accept anymore in Jesus' name. May the fear of the Lord rest upon you today and may you make a mark on the ground and look at your life immediately. Honor what God commanded us to honor. Honor God, honor your marriage, honor your home, your family. Take care of your family. Take care of your children. Work less. Earn less. Your children won't remember that cloth, that shoes, that toy. They will remember the memories that you built. If they were good or bad, whether the Word of God was instilled there or not. In Jesus' name. Enough. Let's stop with it. Enough of hedonism, selfishness, lies, excuses, laziness. Enough of negligences. Enough of going over. What is clear, God is commanding, is alerting, is saying. Let's stop running back and forth and let's focus on what matters. Seek a simple life. You know, happiness is in simple things. I'm not saying that you, you can't have wonderful things, incredible things, even fancy things, but happiness isn't the simple things because you can have 
You can be surrounded by fancy things, the best things in the world. But if you see your child destroyed, your family destroyed, you don't have happiness. You don't have happiness for anything. You don't have peace. So in Jesus' name, if you see the destiny of your children destroyed because they choose the path of death because you neglected it, you won't have happiness. You won't be happy. You won't have peace. So get up and believe in the word of the Lord. Align yourself with God. God is pulling us to a higher level. If you believe, desire, and want to pray with me, Prepare something you want to receive prayer for. I'll be right back to pray with you. Senhor, meu Deus. Lord, my God and my Father, I pray for the dear life that is with me. And I ask, may this word have really today transformed their lives, given them understanding, but light in what they weren't seeing, and may they have already reason with firm decisions, fearing you, Lord. May they have already decided to align themselves with you, Lord. May they definitely have decided to align themselves with you. May the fear of the Lord have filled lives and hearts. In Jesus' name, bless homes and families, all who sent their prayer requests. And I pray, Lord, I ask, Lord, may families have been impacted and made decisions, firm and fearful decisions, once again, have been made. We need to turn back to you fast, quickly, and do what your word has been teaching us. You are alerting us. Bless my friends and fellow sowers. I prophesy prosperity in this believer's life. Raise more sowers because we need them. And wherever this program is reaching, may hold all these families being touched, transformed. May their lifestyle change. May your board be be part of their homes, hearts, their families, and may I see families being grounded on your word. May I see strong people being guided, directed by you, Lord. May they be grounded in your word. Thank you so much for everything. I ask for your blessing, I give my blessing, I praise you, I love you, thank you for this message, thank you so much for everything, amen, 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 thank God. The live helpline phone number is 5511 3296 we're located at 995 Taquari Street in Sao Paulo, Brazil, it's very where we are and today the God who heals service in all our temples and schedules Sunday I'll be at 9 with the first fruit with the first fruit service for the beloved family of God and I'll wait for you with your family count on us it is a pleasure to serve and if the Lord Jesus doesn't if the Lord Jesus doesn't come back I will continue here talking about life and life change have a nice day amen <laughs>